जन्मादियम वैरितर तस्तिर्स्वादिद्यास्वरा तेने ब्रह्मदय अधिक वे मोजंतुज सुरय तेजो वरी मृदा जता विनिमजो जत्र मृष दम न स्वेना सदा निरास्त कुहकम सत्यंग परम धीमि ओम अलोर श्री कृष्ण सन ऑफ वासुदेव ओ ओप वेरिंग पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गाड हैड आफ एम आई रिस्पेक्टफुल बेसन सन टू यू आई मेरी दिल अपन लो श्री कृष्ण because it is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation sustenance and destruction of manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him It is he only who first imparted Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire, or land seen on water. only because of him due to material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal i therefore meditate upon him lord shri krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world i meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth dharma punji takaita vatva भगवतरा truth is reality distinguished from illusion the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all so the truth uproots the threefold miseries so the truth uproots the threefold miseries as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of bhagavatam as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge by this culture of knowledge the supreme lord is established within his heart the supreme lord is established in his heart निगम कपतरो गलित फल सुखमकाद the mature fruit of the desire to evade the literatures it emanated from the lips of shri sukadev goswami therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful even though its nectarian juice is already relishable for all 
including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakta Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Sto Bhadrani. Vidu Noti Srihit Satam. To hear, hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Kamaloba dayas chaye. Chaitere tayre navidam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. Stityam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service of the Lord. I'm sorry. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Mukta sangha sajayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Siddhyante sarvasamsaya. Siddhyante chasikarmani. Drista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Text Number 38. Yad Bahu Dandabya Yudha Dun Ujit Vino. Yada Pravira Hi Akuto Baya Muhu. Adikramantyangiri bir artam balat Sabam sudarmam surasata mochitam Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty being protected by the arms of Lord Sri Krishna always remain fearless in every respect, and therefore their feet trample over the Sudharma Assembly House, which the best demigods deserve, but which was taken away from them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada Patita Palani Kije. 
Those who are directly servitors of the Lord are protected by the Lord from all fearlessness, a fearfulness. And they also enjoy the best of things, even if they are forcibly accumulated. The Lord is equal in behavior to all living beings, but he is partial to his pure devotees, being very affectionate toward them. The city of Dwarka was flourishing, being enriched with the best of things in the material world. The state assembly house is constructed according to the dignity of the particular state. In the heavenly planets, the state assembly house called Sudharma was deserving of the dignity of the best of the demigods. Such an assembly house is never meant for any state in the globe because the human being on the earth is unable to construct it. However far a particular state may be materially advanced, but during the time of Lord Krishna's presence on the earth, the members of the other family forcibly brought the celestial assembly house to earth and placed it at Dwarka. They were able to use such force because they were certain of the indulgence and protection of the Supreme Lord Krishna. In other words, the Lord is provided with the best things in the universe by his devotees. Lord Krishna was provided with all kinds of comforts and facilities available within the universe by the members of the Yadu dynasty. And in return, such servitors of the Lord were protected and fearless. A forgetful, conditioned soul is fearful. But a liberated soul is never fearful, just as a small child completely dependent on the mercy of his father is never fearful of anyone. Fearfulness is a sort of illusion for the living being when he is in slumber and forgetting his eternal relation with the Lord. Since the living being is never to die by his constitution, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.20, then what is the cause of fearfulness? A person may be fearful of a tiger in a dream, but another man who is awake by his side sees no tiger there. The tiger is a myth for both of them, namely a person dreaming and a person awake. <coughs> because actually, there's no tiger, but the man forgetful of his awkward life is fearful. The uh, uh, man forgetful of his awakened life is fearful, whereas the man who has not forgotten his position is not at all fearful. Thus, the members of the other dynasty were fully awake in their service to the Lord, and therefore there was no tiger for them to be afraid of at any time. Even if there were a real tiger, the Lord was there to protect them. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So this is a very uh, profound point. Fearfulness is a sort of illusion for the living entity when he is in slumber and forgetting his eternal relation with the Lord. That means that we are suffering from what's called a daydream and a night dream. At night, when we're dream dreaming, the daydream seems like a dream. And during the day, the night dream seems like a dream. So th we're suffering from two dreams, a daydream and a night dream. So when Prabhupada explained this to the devotees, uh, one devotee asked him a question. He said, Prabhupada, is this a dream right now? Meaning, you know, they were on a, some kind of morning walk. And uh, Prabhupada said, this is Krishna consciousness. This is not a dream. <laughs> so there's a difference between, uh, well, what did, what did he mean by that? that mean, he means that the ultimate reality is Krishna consciousness. All other realities like sense gratification, material, uh, let's say, wealth, going down to poverty and, and suffering. Of course, everyone's suffering, the wealthy and the poor. All these things are dreams. But Krishna consciousness is reality because it's connected to Krishna. And that is also the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in the four 
nutshell verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, one verse says that anything that seems to be disconnected from Krishna is maya, an illusion, because everything is, is in relationship to the Lord. There's nothing outside the relationship with the Lord. So, therefore, uh, devotees who are always remembering Krishna and engaged in Krishna's service and, and with Krishna by chanting the holy name of the Lord because chanting the name of the Lord is not different than the Lord. The holy name of the Lord is not different than him. Do not mam namanamine. <coughs> Therefore, that is not a dream. But anything that seems to be separate from the Lord like sense gratification, like intoxication, like meat eating, gambling, all these things. All these things that are considered happiness for the material, materially uh, illusioned people is actually maya or an illusion. It's not real because it will begin and end. Anything that has a beginning and an end is illusory. While it's happening, it seems real, but when it ends, it's an, it's an illusion. You can't get it back. It's finished. But the relationship with Krishna is eternal. It never ends. It only gets better. So, therefore, understanding that one verse uh, one, one from the from the uh, uh, the uh, nutshell verses of the Bhagavatam is very important. Let's see if, if I can find it for you right now. Uh, let's see. Bhagavatam. I think it's the second canto. Okay. Two, one, two, three, four, and five. I don't have that Bhagavatam now, but uh, let's see. Uh, uh, 227 to 325. One second. I think I have it here. 325. No. Okay. Anyway, it says anything that's not in relationship with Krishna is actually an illusion. So that, that should be a very important verse for all of us because whenever we're contemplating doing something, we should ask the question, is this something that can be offered to Krishna? Is this something that has uh, eternity? Or is this something temporary that comes and goes? So sense gratification is something temporary that comes and goes. So that means it's an illusion. It's not real because it doesn't have continuity. Uh, and making money, that, that's somewhat illusory be, uh, unless you use the money in the service of Krishna. If, if you use the money for sense gratification, then the whole enterprise is an illusion. And how about uh, building a big palace for oneself? Well, that's illusory because if it's for sense gratification, then it's not connected to Krishna. So it'll come and go. However, devotional service, if you know uh, from uh, uh, the verse, the habi krama nastas, the pratijaya navidyate, swapam apiyasya dharma, shachayate mahato bayat, it doesn't come and go. The effect of devotional service is eternal. And whatever we do in this life, in the next life, we start from that point. We don't start from zero. So therefore, anything in connection with Krishna is eternal. Anything separated from Krishna is illusory because it begins and ends. So fearfulness is a sort of illusion for the living being when he is in slumber and forgetting his eternal relation with the Lord. So, like for example, uh, someone may be in danger and they're fearful. Someone has threatened to kill them or something like that. And then that person who's threatened to kill them, they get caught and they're put in jail. And then the person 
fear subsides. They're not fearful anymore. So we see that's an illusory thing because it begins and ends. Anything that begins and ends is of the nature illusory. But something that is eternal is real. So Prabhupada says, since the living being is never to die by his constitution, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.20, in the Jayate Mriyate Vakadachan, then what is the cause of fearfulness? A person may be fearful of a tiger in a dream, but another man who is awake by his side sees no tiger there. The tiger is a myth for both of them, namely the person dreaming and the person awake, because actually there is no tiger. But the man fearful of his awakened life is fearful, whereas the man who has not forgotten his position is not at all fearful. What is his position? His position is as a person who's always remembering Krishna by chanting Hare Krishna, remembering Krishna, engaging in Krishna's service, therefore he's not fearful because he has faith that Krishna will protect him as long as his motives are pure. <coughs> and we see that in the case of Narada Narad Muni, I mean, in the case of Prahlad Maharaj, in the case of Ambrish Maharaj, in the case of Dhruva Maharaj, and so many others. <coughs> so, but if man forgetful of his awakened life is fearful, whereas a man who has not forgotten his position is not at all fearful. Thus the members of the other dynasty were fully awake in their service to the Lord, and therefore there was no tiger for them to be afraid of at any time. Even if there were a real tiger, the Lord was there to protect them. Now, this is a profound point, again, because... Uh, there is such a thing as, uh, you could call it, the illusory tiger. Why does a person become fearful? Because they become attached to temporary things, like the body, like sense gratification, like money. So all those things are subject to uh, decay or deterioration and disappearance. Therefore, one is fearful. Because if you are attached to the body and the body is deteriorating and then eventually will die, you don't know what's going to happen to you. See? So this not knowing what's going to happen to us causes fear. And uh, you're not sure about the future. So the devotee is sure about the future because in one way or other, Krishna promises, He's going to protect his devotee. And the devotee becomes convinced that he's not this body, he's the soul, and the soul is eternal and has an eternal relationship with Krishna. So all these things permit the devotee to continue doing their service. That's the, that's the result of being fearless, abhaya. One does not give up the service under any circumstances. Like, for example, someone can say, oh, the leader in this place is not good. But if their service is to be a pujari, that's not a reason to give up the service. One should never give up their service. In fact, one should always increase their service if possible. So that's the sign of a real devotee. They're not disturbed in any condition because they continue doing their service regardless of uh, the external conditions. And there's an example of this. For, exa for example, you can go to India and you can visit places where there's a, an old temple with only one pujari. And the temple may even be missing a wall or a roof. You know, you, you'll see this in India today. But the pujari is still doing arti every day, still doing offerings, even though the... Yeah, there's hardly any money and hardly anyone is coming to the temple. So that staunch uh, steadiness is a sign of spiritual, uh, let's say, advancement. Regardless of the material conditions, the person continues their service. <coughs> so, therefore, another important point is... 
It says, Lord Krishna was provided with all kinds of comforts and facilities available within the universe by the members of the Yadu dynasty, and in return, such servitors of the Lord were protected and fearless. So this uh, protection and this fearlessness is a symbol or is, is a sign of a devotee who is so dedicated to their s service that Krishna is providing them with this protection and uh, the devotee is not affected by fear, which is something that is illusory, right? Prabhupada says, fearfulness is a sort of illusion for the living being. So how do we come to believe all this? Well, we have to practice Krishna consciousness, and we have to have faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the controller, Ishwara, and this provider of everything, and not be preoccupied by uh, the uh, phantom of the tiger or the, the paper dragon. See, many people act like paper dragons. They act like they're invincible, but when they're challenged, they just fall apart. So we should not be afraid. Just like once uh, a thief was brought before Alexander. And Alexander says, what do you have to say for yourself? And he said, well, uh, he said, there's not much difference between me and you, except that you're a big thief and I'm a little thief. So Alexander thought about it and said, well, he's right. He's right. I am a big thief and he's a little thief. So then he pardoned him. So in order to say something like that in a situation, you have to have what's called spunk or... Uh, you have to have uh, courage and be sure of yourself. And he was sure of himself because he knew Alexander was a thief. So one thief can recognize another thief. So this is a, so it was a very clever thing that he said, and, and Alexander accepted it. Now, normally, he could have also said, okay, cut his head off. Just like uh, one time there was this one uh, Sufi in uh, in Delhi, during the uh, Mughal or the you know the Muslim uh, uh, control of the country, and he was always repeating "La ila la ila la ila la ila la ila," which means it's part of the uh, uh, the Maha, the Maha mantra of the Muslims is "La ila ila la Muhammad Rasulullah." That is that. There is no God but one God, and Muhammad is his prophet. But this man was only saying, la ila, la ila, la ila, there's no God. So he was arrested and taken before the emperor. And the emperor said, what is this nonsense? Why do you say la ila? Why don't you repeat the whole thing? He said, well, I've only realized la ila, la ila. So the king said, okay, cut his head off right away. That was it. So, I mean, Alexander could have done that also, but uh, he was faced with the truth. You're a big thief, I'm a, l a little thief. What's the difference? Whereas the Sufi who was saying, I only have re realized there's no God, well, that is a blasphemy that's misusing that uh, uh, prayer. La ila ila la Muhammad Rasulullah. It's misusing the prayer. It's, it's, saying, it's only saying part of it. It's like half-truth. Therefore, they cut his head off. So therefore, when you speak the truth, you should not be afraid. Uh, because there's... Uh, and people who have half a sense will ex acknowledge that, yeah, this is the truth. And people who are completely rascals, of course, they never ex acknowledge anything. Okay, we'll stop there. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you.
Thank you very much. All glories to Sheila Prabhupada Ki Jai.